Hi there. We're here at the old St. Anne's Kirkyard in Stonehouse. It's a truly ancient and fascinating site and has been in constant use for centuries, possibly even millennia, right up until the 1700s, well the church was in use up until uh, about 1770s. They built a new church, uh, St Ninian's Kirk, down in the village itself in New Street in 1772. That church you see there is the last church on the site or the last kirk. All that's left there is the is the gable end containing the bell tower. It's believed, I think, that it was uh, dates back to the the fifteen hundreds. Good to some of it survived anyway. This would have been the, the inner side there. You can see the apex. Truly has a beautiful day. Couldn't resist coming out. This site is dedicated to St Ninian. It's believed that the first dedication uh, happened around about the 9th century and they believe that that was the first stone uh, kirk on this site. There's been several uh, ones that came after that but the one you see there is, is the last one of the sequence. Some say that the that the first kirk on this site would have been the first stone house and therefore given the village its name stone house. Who knows? It's also believed that there could have been earlier Christian uh, building on this site, pro probably timber construction. Although this uh, Christian site was dedicated to St Ninian in the 9th century, St Ninian actually lived a lot earlier than this period. He was born in Scotland in the year 360 AD, it is believed, and died about 432 AD. He was known to be a missionary, uh, spreading the word of Christianity within uh, the southern Picts of Scotland. And for that he was known as the Apostle to the Picts. And there's a lot of dedications uh, to St Nanny within the range of the southern Picts which is now basically southern Scotland and in, I believe in some parts of northern England as well or what is now northern England Stunning There is also a belief, and one that I subscribe to, that this site goes way back beyond Christianity and goes back into the pagan times. Now, when Christianity came to these islands and came to Scotland, the people were pagan. Uh, they had different beliefs, gods, etc. 
not that we know of, the, not the same that we know today. So, missionaries came through, which were basically mobile salesmen, and they were selling this new religion. Just watching the birds, there. <coughs> and they were uh, selling this new religion to these people that believed in the older ways. St Ninian was one of these. But when these people came round Scotland, they would have came across pagan sites, religious sites, ritual sites that were important to these people. And they would have to overcome these beliefs if they were to pre prevail and spread the Christian religion amongst these peoples. Now, kind of basically what they've done is they just hijacked older sites and mixed their new religion in with the older one and intertwined them. In that way, they could effectively take over without much protest. Now, it is believed that this site would have dated back possibly to the Bronze Age. And I think we, there's a good possibility that that was the case. It is, if you look over here, you're high up. You're facing out over water. You're pretty much surrounded by water here as well. Down there in that low bit, there's a, there's a wee burn that runs down and meets the River Avon. That's the River Avon round there and it swings round that way. There's also a wee burn over there that runs down into the Avon. You're nearly encircled with water. There's also springs as well. There's some, some just down here, in fact. Stonehouse is, is surrounded by, by natural springs. The, there is a possibility that the, there was probably standing stones here at one time. Now just across the valley, you can't see for these trees, but literally just over there, there is the town of Glassford, or as the locals uh, refer to it, Glessert, or the Glessert. Now, just down the hill for there, there's a wee burn, I think it's called the Priest Burn. And just the slope above it, there is uh, the three standing stones. Uh, called the Glessert Stains. It is believed by some that this site could have had a similar sort of um, configuration of standard stone, standing stones or even um, a stone circle. That's highly possible. And that would have made a prime target for for building a Christian site on. Now I read somewhere that around about 1937 they found a prehistoric stone kist, burial kist. Now kist is just a Scots word that we use, it's an older word that we use for a box or a coffin. It can be made out of stone, it can be made out of wood. In the past they were predominantly stained. I can't find too much information on that. It seems to have been recorded then lost, but it kind of, it makes sense anyway to me that, that you would have got, you'd find older artefacts on this site. I mean, surrounding Stonehouse, there is a mass of Bronze Age burial sites, burial cairns, uh, dating from 4000 BC right down to uh, 12, 1200 BC. So you're looking at a range from between 6000 years ago 
right up to uh, 1200 uh, years before Christ, so effectively 3200. Now that, as you'll know, uh, predates Christianity by a considerable amount of years. But, that's, uh, that's the older part. Um, the, the Glesser stones that I mentioned, um, I'm going to go and visit them uh, fairly shortly. Uh, once the weather improves a wee bit, although it's a perfectly fine day, um, I'll go over and uh, show you the wee walk run and uh, we'll have a wee look at them. And I'll try and visit some of these um, older Bronze Age sites, just roundabouts, uh, Stonehouse. Some of them have been uh, wrecked by roads, uh, but there's still a few of them standing. There's actually some just over there uh, towards Lark Hall, uh, near Patrick Home. Um, they were, I believe, excavated about a hundred years ago, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was, uh, they found them when they were quarrying, uh, I think possibly sand, uh, they came across them and archaeologists uh, recorded them. You can you can read about that on, uh, uh, on the internet, but there's, to my knowledge, I don't think there's anything left. Um, I think they were all basically just recorded and um, took away. Which is a shame, but um, a lot of that happens um, not just in Scotland but everywhere in the world. History gets sacrificed for the name of progress, but that's enough of that. We'll have a wee look around uh, this site and see what we can see. Now, this wasn't very smart of me. Um, I decided to come here in the snow because of the, the beauty factor but didn't really consider that a lot of these stones lie horizontal and uh, that would be a snow trap but that there is the stone with the oldest inscription on it and as you'll appreciate you can't really see it from the snow it's got this moss on it uh, which is basically frozen solid, you can't even clean that. But if you want to come here and see it, here's a wee marker. There's a church. There's these... Well, that's a yew tree there. You always find one of them in a church. Or, should I say, you normally always find an old church where there's a yew tree. The yew tree was held in high regard by the pagans. Uh, they seen it as a sort of a tree of life due to its long life uh, itself, it's evergreen um, and when it appears to be dying off and going into the ground it grows back up again uh, and reshoots effectively so they seen it as, a, as an, an everlasting um, sort of entity So um, a lot of old, a lot of old churches were were built round about yew trees. And that was another way that they used to uh, to kind of intertwine the new religion that they were trying to sell the people and their older beliefs, their their natural gods. But anyway, so you got that there. And it's just basically, if you're looking up towards the kirk, it's effectively dead centre between the two. Yew tree on your left, church on your right. And it's roughly about sort of 10 yards away from the yew tree. Now, if we go down the hill, we will possibly find, if the snow's not too deep, Here we go. <clears throat> this is your medieval fragment here. It's not got any inscription on it, but 
it's uh, so you're not missing much for the snow but it's just got it's just got that triangular type of structure now if you're ever in older graveyards look out for these types of stones a lot of them are reused later on in fact i'll take you to a site um just below uh, netherton and i'll show you it's basically one of the oldest collect <coughs> sorry it's one of the largest collections of old medieval uh, burial stones um a lot of them are still I think in their original position, but it's a lot of them been used in later graves eh, of the sort of 16, 1700s. But that there is just a fragment, and that's original setting. It had been worked as like a kind of capstone, and it would have it had lay flat along the ground, with that sort of apex facing up the way. Sometimes you get carvings on them. Um, other times you don't, but that's def definitely one to keep a look out for. But I'll show you show you those graves when I go and do that uh, wee video. It's one you couldn't do in a day like this because they're all lying flat. You'd never see them. You'd in fact, you'd never find them. Right, go a wee walk around and see what else we can find. When you go a walk around this, you'll see a lot of beautifully carved stones. And a lot of them dating from the 1700s and the 1800s. They're actually some of the finest. I've done a wee video before, it was just a kind of introductory one to this, but the weather was poor. Uh, blowing an absolute gale uh, and a bit of rain. So I didn't really get a chance to um, to go around and really showcase the site, but you'll see a lot of stones that are carved with uh, the trades uh, that the the person uh, worked as during their lifetime. Uh, there's also, as I say, a lot of sort of beautiful ones uh, with like, the sort of skull and crossbones. The the, like the egg timer uh, type thing as well which is I believe a symbol of uh, mortality and a uh, time like everything always comes to an end but we'll see if we can find some of them there's, there's also as I say the bloodstone uh, which is one that I used to, were told all sorts of stuff back in back when we were kids about this. I was brought up in this area. In fact, lived in the village for half my life. Uh, and this is one. As I say, there's a lot of lot of stories attached to this. But we'll go and have a wee look at that. I'm actually going to do a video specifically about the bloodstone. Uh, it's a martyr's grave uh, for a covenant or killed at. The Battle of Drunklog, which uh, isn't too far away for you, and uh, it's one that kind of deserves a video in its own right, so keep a wee eye out for that one in future. I'll do that at another time, but uh, we'll uh, go and have a wee look at Bloodstone. Right, so just standing at the Martyr's Grave, the Grave of the Covenanter. A fellow, some say he was called James Thompson, other people say he was called John Thompson. We'll get into that later. But he was killed at the Battle of Drumclog in 1679. Now, as I said, eh, Drumclog wasn't too far away from here. And it was a, a battle between eh, Graham McLeverhus, who was eh, leading eh, Royalist Dragoons, against the Covenanters. Uh, the Covenanters uh, suffered very light casualties uh, during that um, battle and the Dragoons they lost it and came off considerably worse. But here's the, the grave of 
be one of those that fell in the Covenant or ranks. Now, as I said, it's known as a bloodstone. Again, because of the snow, it's not going to be too easy to see, but I'll try and clean the top off it and I'll show you what I mean. Here, you'll see a skull, two eyes, and the mouth. Now, I'm not going to be able to do, um, well, I'm not going to be able to show you uh, how it's called the bloodstone, but I'll come back in an RD and I will show you because what you're meant to do is wet your finger and uh, put it in where the mouth would be on the skull and it comes out covered in red which is said to be blood uh, hence the name of the bloodstone but it's probably an easy explanation for that the stone in which the gravestone is made out of is got a, a seam of ochre running through it so effectively iron stone and the staining is iron oxide rust so kind of explains that but like I said um, I'll do a proper video on that because it's one it's got a lot of history attached to it and kind of deserves a wee bit of a wee bit more attention. So we'll go on our wheel, look around, see what we can find. Here's one here, 1707, and it's got the the skull. Some of these are pretty cool. Some would say morbid, but I don't know. They have a meaning. They're some. They're symbolic. Here's another one over here. Now a lot of these are sunken into the ground unfortunately so you can't see their full thing. Now it looks like two hearts either side of uh, a skull. I think I'm actually going to need to come back here in better weather and show you these. Uh, you can't really see a lot of them. Uh, look at the lichens that cover them over attracting tracked in ice and snow and same with the moss. That's another thing with this site. Uh, you got a better appreciation of it in a, uh, in a day where, where they're not covered in ice and snow, but there's actually more uh, lichens found in this one graveyard than any other graveyard anywhere else, in, at least Scotland anyway. Now, just in case you don't know what lichens are, that's these. I'm afraid I do not know much about them. But experts have checked them and they they know what they're talking about and they they've identified more species in this one uh, graveyard than any other one in Scotland so uh, that's a wee claim to fame for it as well it's also the if I didn't say earlier it's, uh, it's the oldest burial site in the parish they are the oldest known burial site in the parish. There's actually 400 or over 400 known graves uh, within within this yard. To be fair, that's probably just the marked ones. Uh, there'll be a lot more that are stones are long gone and consigned to consigned to history. Now, we'll have a wee look around and see if we can find any more one here. You'll see 1728. And you can possibly just make out that's a mallet and a chisel. This guy here that died in 1828, so nearly 300 years ago, he was a stonemason. 
We'll see if there's anything on the back face. Sometimes you see some stuff. Ah, uh, here we go. Can't really make a load of that out, but there's. That's odd. Right, that there is an axe. And that, I believe, is an auger for drilling wood. No. And this side here is still 1728. And you've got the skull down there, a heart, and I think that's been an hourglass. I said egg timer earlier on, but an hourglass. So, signifying the passing of time. That's two sides to a stone. One side has this guy down as being a stonemason, and the other side has him down as being a joiner or carpenter. So, um, hmm, strange one. But we'll have a wee look here around, see what else we can find. This is another one here. It's no far away from the one that was marked a uh, 1728 for well what looks like a mason on one side and a carpenter on the other. That was that one just there. U tree. And you got this thing, I think Landy Eye or whatever the hell they call them. So you got this wee one here. You can make it a rough outline. Now, that's a shaft, and that's a blade. Now, that's a, that's an axe. So this guy would have been... He would have been, well, a carpenter as well. Let's see if there's anyone on the other side. That can't really make out anything. So, on to the next one, see what we can find. I'll catch you there. Here's another one of these uh, crack and carved ones. There's no actually a trade one, but it's just got the, the symbology. A wee beauty. There's really a lot of these round here that's uh, dated early 1700s. I actually fear I'm going to need to... Um, there's a lot you can't see because uh, you wind blowing snow. But uh, I'll come back when the weather's a wee bit clearer and, uh, and have a wee, a wee look round and give you a better look. But, so I'll persevere the new and see if I can find a few few others that are, are readable. If no, I'll come back. Well in fact, I'll definitely come back and I'll have a have a better look round. Ah, uh, this is one I've been looking for. This guy, don't know if you can make this out. <coughs> I want you some kind of knee spot. You go here, a horseshoe, a hammer, and a horseshoe. No. This guy's been a farrier, blacksmith. But there's also a wee bit of symbology there as well in the horseshoes. Now, depending on what we round a horseshoe is, denotes luck. 
Now this one here is like that. So that's good luck. This one here is like that, facing down the way. That's bad luck. Now the way that works is, if it's like that, it's going to hold the luck. If it's like that, all the luck's going to fall out. So, if you're ever going to be putting a horseshoe up on a wall or whatever, no, it is known as a as a symbol for for good luck. Always put it that way, or um, it's not going to work. No, here is this here we go the Masonic symbol. No, I don't know. Don't know whether that's you can't really read it because of the the snow in the ice. But uh, I'm not sure whether these two are linked. But like I said, I'll come back in a better day when the, when the snow in the ice is all melted off, and I'll have a wee a wee look. Incidentally. If you're into uh, doing stone rubbings and stuff like that, see paper and uh, either graphite or, or wax grain, uh, these places are excellent. In fact, you could probably get a better view because you'll pick up detail that uh, you, the eye doesn't does really see. So, if you're into that sort of stuff, obviously don't do any damage to the stones or anything like that, that's the most important thing, but it's uh, you can sometimes see a few hidden details in there. These stones are needing a wee bit of a, a wee bit of a clean up. I hope uh, I hope as I say somebody really does that and get, doesn't really forget about this site because it's uh, it's a special one. I'll call that a day on this uh, wee trip, but I shall return, in the words of MacArthur, if you're an American, and on a better day, where you can get a kneel down on the ground and have a wee, a wee closer look at some of the stuff, but um Come back and we'll have a wee look at the, the stones in greater detail. I covered the history of the site, so next one I'll cover cover the stones in detail. And also, like I said, the bloodstone which is just over there. I'll show you just how you find it. You go the gate down there, so if you come up this path that runs along the wall to this yew tree here and then walk effectively in fact if you go halfway between that yew tree and that tree there which possibly a sycamore basically straight down the middle both takes you right to that and you'll see the there's a wee black uh, marker, stone on the bottom, that says Covenanter, uh, Martyr. And that's your, that's your bloodstone there. But like I said, uh, I want to do a specific video on that guy. And we'll discuss his, his exploits during the battle. And I'll do that in a separate video. As I say, it's one that kind of warrants its own its own video. But until then, I'll see you later. Now, if you like this and want to be kept up to date, uh, say please hit the like button and subscribe. And feel free to check other videos out on the channel. It's at this point it's a fairly young channel and it's uh, I'm trying to get 
as much videos as possible but it's kind of hard during this time of the Covid restrictions so I'm stuck to my local area thankfully I've got a lot of history in my local area and you can self isolate quite easily in some of these bits so it's a, it's a wee bonus you can hear the geese behind me so if you like what you see hit the like button hit subscribe and be kept up to date feel free to share it on any of the platforms uh, that you can um, we like minded people so until then or until the next video I'll see you later take care slange